Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So let's get excited uh, and get into today's session. So I put a big claim out on uh, today's session, and that was that the mastering the superconscious is not what you think. See, I had this idea when I started about creation and about uh, creating outcomes that uh, what I really needed to do was to have no resistance. So when I first learned the superconscious method, uh, well, what turned into Recode, I learned from a lady named Colette Stryker, who's my, one of my best friends on the planet. We talk every single week on a Tuesday, and uh, and I absolutely love love her so much. And she she showed me the MAP method, which was the uh, the precursor to what became the Recode. Uh, and the MAP method was based off uh, Dr. Gary Flint's work, and um, you know his. his um, hit what, what he discovered and how to teach the brain to do um, EDMR and EFT without needing to actually do the tapping. So anyway, I met Colin and I did this work and, and what I got, I got this idea that if I just had no resistance, then I would be able to, to create success. And so I want you to get this and write this down. True mastery of creation is not about having no resistance. True mastery and creation is not about not getting triggered. We might think that other courses might say you want to try to never get triggered or, or um, never have any resistance to anything. And it's, it's just not it's not true. And it's not something that's ever going to happen. Many people come into this program and they say to themselves, you know what I really want? I never want to have any negative feelings. I never want to have any trouble. I don't want I just want like completely calm, plain sailing. So that's not actual mastery. Actual mastery isn't a life without triggering or without resistance. Actual mastery is about where your focus is. Mastery, write this down, mastery is not about not getting triggered. Mastery is about focus. Superconscious creation is about focus. So you are a creative energy. And where you put the focus, you create. And so what happened to me is I learned this amazing method. And to me, when I started, it was called the MAP method. And, uh, and what I decided is that I needed to have no conflict and feel good about everything. And what happened is I did. I literally just went through my history and I started trying to, to recode and shift everything I could. I did ancestral stuff. And I spent years, in fact, doing this, even before the MAP method. And years and years and years. But where was my focus? Where was my focus? If my consciousness is focused on how I need to always feel good and how everything always needs to, where's my focus? Is my focus on what I'm trying to create or is my focus fixated on an idea that I can't feel bad feelings? That everything, you see that? And so what did I create? My conscious needed something to always work on. It needed a bad feeling. It needed something to remove. It needed a project. See, my conscious needed a project. So in order for uh, you know my conscious to have something to do, it always had to find something that wasn't quite right about my, the way I was feeling. You see? So what did it always find? You see? See, what's the point of an army? It needs a war. You see, what a really interesting thing I find very interesting is that in order to, to have a solution, you need to have a problem that you're fighting. But however, whenever, whenever you have solved that fight, that, that army still needs to go looking for its next fight. Otherwise, what's it supposed to do? So you must understand that the truth about superconscious creation is where you're focused because your consciousness and your focus creates reality. Does that make sense? Your consciousness and focus creates reality. And this is what I found. So what I found is that I spent two years and I could always find something more to recode or fix about myself. Has anyone ever done other programs or, or even maybe when you started here and you didn't quite understand this concept and you could always find something more that wasn't right? <laughs> As Scotty uh, put it in, not enough problems to fix. Yeah, true. You could always find more. So whenever you look for it, you find something. Your conscious will always find something. It's kind of why the universe is always expanding because every time we look, we have to see something. 
you see so we always we're always going to find it so we must give up we must put down this idea that there's such a thing that you can completely heal everything you see and, and that there'll be an ending to it there there that's not true instead you must learn something different which is to put your focus on the end result when you can put your focus on the end result then your consciousness knows where it's going if you try to put your focus on what's not right it will just have to keep on finding what's not right you see the difference there so i want to introduce many of you to a new concept for some of you in the creator course uh you know all about this so so really really get it is not about not feeling triggered in your creation process you're going to be co-created this this uh your, your reality be co-created you're, you're probably going to have to deal with uh, other people uh, in your in your life that maybe maybe don't want the same thing as you maybe they they choose to see it see it differently maybe you know they die on you and that's going to be triggering maybe uh, you know they leave or they cheat or they do actions that you don't want maybe you're going to have to live in a society where you don't agree with everything they're going to say maybe you're going to be living uh, around lots of different situations and maybe you're going to have health challenges that that are going to be there the truth is is that life isn't about trying to create this this bubble of of not feeling good it's about creating what you love okay it's about creating what you love and you can do two things you can either try to remove everything you don't want or crowd it out just just right you can crowd it out by being so focused on creating health there's no room for dis-ease you crowded it out do you see that if you if you're so focused on creating financial abuzz, abundance there's no room for poverty there's no room for scarcity does that make sense it's not it can't be there but if you focus on trying to get rid of it something else has to always replace it and so the key to mastery isn't actually removing your triggers the key to mastery is putting your focus on the right place who's with me on that that's the key it's putting your focus in the right place so resistance will always show up I thought a lot about, you know, what's life about? And, uh, what, you know, I, I looked at many different things and studied religions and studied texts. What, what is this existence about? What am I? What am I here to do? And, and you know, I looked at, uh, at many different ways of thinking. And, and the one that I loved the most out of everything I looked at was Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey. And his hero's journey is something that is so profound. I want to quickly explain it to you. You'll find this journey is something that humans are completely fascinated with in fact i would go as far as saying there is nothing that humans are more fascinated with than the hero's journey so what is the hero's journey well the hero's journey starts out with a call to action there's a a, a person a character a call to action as they go out on this journey they fight off temptations and challenges and worries and as they're going for this end result there's always a challenge a drama there's there's something that they need to figure out and overcome there's a rebirth a death a transformation there's an abyss they fall into they come out the other side different they come out the other side different with new insights new awareness they succeed and they return home only to get called on another journey you see this everywhere every single movie that we line up for is a hero's journey whether it's a romantic uh romantic movie an action movie a drama there's always a point there's always something that the lead character is going for now here's what's true we don't like stories where there's no drama going on we don't want to go and watch something where they say oh we tried to do this and then we did it then there was nothing we had to overcome you see and humans also don't like it if the if the character doesn't overcome it you see we're so obsessed with this this is what you see in sport so sport we don't want to go watch the united states uh dream team the basketball team play play an under you know an under 15 side and just win 100 to, to one we don't want to see that we want to see two teams that are that are equally matched and we want to see the drama and we want to see a battle out and then we want to see a winner same with in, in uh you know romantic movies she doesn't just the, the the lead woman doesn't just have you know one man that's the right husband or whatever it is and then they just get happily married no normally she's he's over there the one she should be with and she's kind of with this other one that's not quite right and there's this conflict and drama do you know thing i love the most is if you ever watch like um you know police movies and there's so much drama right so typically there's the the lead cop right 
And the lead cop is somehow knows the lead bad guy, like they know each other and there's a dialogue going on. But then the cop doesn't just have that drama. That cop also has drama with his, uh, you know, his, his partner. They don't see eye to eye. But then also there always is some sort of lieutenant or commander who's also like telling them off. But then as they arrive at the scene, if they are the, you know, LAPD, then the FBI get there first and they have a fight. And then there's then there's over on the other side, there's more drama. There's so much conflict, you see. And, and that's what creates a good story. And what we must understand is, is this story is in us. This story is a story in every single religious text that has stuck with us, you see. Every story that's, uh, you know, over the test of time, whether whatever religion you look at, whatever stories, you will see the same journey. You'll see it everywhere. And I find that fascinating out of, out of everything. Why is it that we're so obsessed with this? And to me, the what it shows me is there's something in our psyche that's obsessed with this idea of going. And I'm using the word obsessed or fascinated in positive terms, even though I know they can be used in, in non-positive terms. I'm using them as positive terms. We are so positively fascinated with this. And I don't see it in other species. My dogs, they're completely happy just sitting and chilling out. They don't need another thing to create and go after. But it seems that it's innate in human beings that we love this. Whether we like watching other people do it or do it ourselves, it seems that it's like a, a amorphic field or it's in the collective unconscious, as Jung might say, but it's, it's very, very, very interesting. So what I realized is that instead of just trying to be completely comfortable, the real goal in life, and I want you to write this down, is to go on adventures that we're called for, to go on new adventures. Who agrees that we're actually called to go on new adventures of creating creating the next thing we love who agrees with that by the way we're called we're called for new adventures and what, what's interesting is things that we get called on as we succeed and get to the other side of it those things that we were fascinated with they actually become less fascinating or boring you see as we move through they become less boring i remember one time i was fascinated with how do i make a lot of money and now that's that's a lot a lot less uh, on the scale of things that excite me. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it's something you move, you move through, get called to another adventure, another adventure, another adventure. And so what's interesting about that is when you get called to a new adventure, you haven't done it yet. Therefore, it triggers all aspects of you that don't think you're capable at creating it. Do you see my point? How if you're actually on the creative journey, creating more of what you love and going for, for the next level, there's literally no way to not be uh, having having uh, triggers or resistance pop up unless you're not going for things. True. Give me a true in the chat box if that's true. Unless you're not going for things, unless you're just sitting out and just trying to stay at home, you see, but then the, that, that in itself isn't what you're here for. So it's, it's my premise. Can we just say this is a good premise? The premise is to be called, called like energetically, spiritually, super consciously in your soul, called for a new adventure commit to it and go for it knowing that there's going to be things you're going to have to overcome challenges drama temptations and that you're going to have to completely grow in order to get the result see there's many people here that are called to become a coach start a business you see grow their business become parents have a health journey there's so many ways we get called and we must realize as we get called as we get uh, inspired as we get motivated to whatever it is that's next the way that we've been right now is going to fight who we have to be. And that's why I say is that the, the mastering the superconscious creative process is not about having no resistance. You see, that's about giving up. That's about giving up. When you choose to create, you get called, you get to create it and you go for it. And so, so in my eyes, you're either in one of two places. You're either in creation, going for what you love, called on an adventure, overcoming your limits and creating what you love, or you're giving in to another agenda. You cannot live in both. You cannot be in both. You're either going for it or, or you're, you've, you, you, you're giving up. Hey, you're, you're just uh, sitting on the sidelines. And that's what's really interesting. So write this down. There is an inherent conflict between your heart and your mind. There is an inherent conflict between your heart and your mind. The heart always wants to express its dreams and take passionate action. 
The ego wants safety. You see, see the origins of the word experience actually means to journey through danger. And what this means is, is we actually want to go for, for something. Well, that's what experience is. And, and the, the truth is, is as we go for something, our past is the only way and our, and our ego is our orientation or our self-conscious is our orientation to this world is trying to figure out what's going to happen. And the only way it can figure out what's going to happen is basing it on the past. Okay. And that's because it wants to survive. So anything that when you're creating anything that doesn't match up with what's experienced in the past, there is no mental model for the self-conscious to know what to do. So it just, it just screams danger. And that danger, we've, we don't know what to do here. That danger, we've never been here. We don't know how this is going to go. That danger is what we call resistance. That danger shows up as, as doubt, fear, worry. Anything that the self-conscious can do to stop us moving that way. Go for holes, pop up. Dams get in the way. We cannot move, you see. And, and that's a very, 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 very deep concept, you see. A, 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 a super conscious creator is a, is a warrior. It is someone who is forever engaged in turning their biggest dreams into reality. That that's that's when you know you're you're on that. So the truth is, you you actually have uh, two ways you can be oriented in life, and uh, and they kind of compete. Okay, you either have uh, you're either in the creative structure or you're, you're in its competing agenda. So let's draw this out. You are only in one or the other. You cannot live in both. You, you're either in one or the other in every area of life. You're either in one or the other. And it's not you, you're not broken. It's the structure that you've got to be in. So there's one structure where you're going for your desired reality. And this is just what you would love. And you're going for that and that's what you're doing. And that's your current reality here. The desired reality is in the in the love heart there. So you're either you're either going for what you love or you're going down here and we're just going to we're going to use the word uh, uh, agenda. At times I've called this other agenda your identity agenda. I've called it the self-conscious agenda. William Whitecloud calls it the egoic agenda, and I borrowed that term as well. But here's what you must understand. This other agenda is not in service of creating. So there's some ways that it looks out. The first, the first way that this looks is instead of going for what you love, you're trying to fix yourself. Who has been uh, someone who's tried to fix themselves. Instead of going for what they love, I need to fix this, I need to be smarter, I need to be better here, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need my teeth to be like this, I need to change that, I need to work out more. You see, we're trying to fix, we're trying to be something else, all of us, hey, we try to fix. Another thing that we do is we, we try to compensate. Compensate. That says compensate. Uh, I have my own um, my my own alphabet, and it's just chicken scratch. So when I write it and I say it, you just have to uh, match the words and the and the scribble together, just for the new people. So so compensate for a, a negative um, belief we have about ourselves. So we might think that we're not good enough. So we're going to go try to do good enough stuff. We might think that we're not worthy. So we're going to try to be really, really, really good. You see, we might think that we need to be perfect. So we're going to try to be perfect. So we're going to compensate. We're going to compensate. It's not what we love. We're just compensating, you see. Uh, and another thing that we do that stays down the bottom is, is we try to stay safe. And we just focus on survival. So instead of going for what we love, we code up in our reality how it's going to turn out bad and then don't do it. You see, we don't go for what we love. We go for safe and, and, and survival. See? So, so what happens is as you choose a, a creative desired reality that you'd like to create, this agenda, which might be to keep you safe, to fix yourself, the one thing you, you've got to understand 
is your ego doesn't want you to go and do new things because as you go and create something new, there's a chance that, that you won't be safe. There's a chance that your negative beliefs will be shown as true. And that's scary to it. So what it decides to do is the ego trying to be helpful is going to say, don't do that. Don't go for what you love. So it's this, it's this, this conflict between your heart and your head. So as you go, no, I really would love that. You'll, you'll start to have thoughts and you'll start to have feelings that are trying to tell you that you can't have it. Is it true? You know, you can't have it. Oh, you feel, you got to fix that feeling first. Oh, you can't, you're not smart enough. Go over here, go get your 10th certification. Oh no, you're not, you're not ready to have a relationship. You got to, you got to lose 10, 10 kilograms. You see, you know, no, you, you can't, you're not, you got to do this. You see, and, and, it'll, and it'll, it'll try to bring you down because it doesn't, it doesn't want you to feel bad. It doesn't want disappointment. doesn't want you to go for it. So it's this very strange thing about being a human that I've noticed, and I've been one for probably not even as long as you, but what I've noticed is that uh, I have this, this forever battle between what I would love to see created and what my head tries to tell me. And, and it's, it's interesting. It's interesting, isn't it? So your self-conscious agendas are not really where the power is. As you go for things in life, okay, your, your self-conscious is going to pull up what it imagines is incomplete about you and proposes that instead of going for what you want, there's some things you need to do first. There's some things you need to do first. Marsha says, uh, you still have those head arguments, Chris, question mark. Wow, of course. Of course. So I've got this desire, and I'll share with you, I've got this desire that I want to build um, conscious education campuses all around the world, Marsha. I want to have, you know, 10 hectare campuses with huge seminar rooms and, and therapy rooms and education sites where people can come on with the most amazing food and, 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 and uh, you know, meditate together and learn and then go back home. That's what I'd love to create. But do you know what my brain says? Oh, that's risky. You, you know, that's risky. That's going to take a lot of money. That's this, that's that. Who are you to even do that? And why would you want to? You're making great. You, you've got it fine right now. Just, you know, just, just go sit on the beach. You know, it's fine. Just, just do your sessions. Just stay where you are. You know, I have these desires. I say, I'm going to have, I'm going to teach others how to do magnetic mind. My brain goes, why would you teach others? Why wouldn't you just keep it all to yourself? Da, 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 da. You see? Why, why would you, why, right? Why would you, why would you bother? What if you fail? You've got it going good now. Why would you know? Put bad after good. Just keep it as it is. Don't change. Don't grow. You see, so it's always there. Does that make sense? It's always there. And the thing is, is you must ask yourself, where do you put the power? Do you put the power in that? Or do you just put, do you, do you learn to see it, acknowledge it and rise above it? You see, so that, that's the question. How do you know where you're putting the power? Your action. Your action. I got it, Archer. <laughs> and so you must always ask yourself in every moment, where am I putting the power. So write this down. To be triggered, you must be loaded. To get triggered, you must be loaded. And what we can do is we can unpack, we can unload. To be triggered, you must be loaded. And so when you get these triggers of, of self-doubt, these things, you, that's loaded in you and you, you get to unpack them. Okay. And then you get to go for what you love, but then just realize that once you achieve what you love and then you go for the next thing, you're probably going to get a similar trigger happen again. And then you get to unload it and then go for it. See, it's not about being perfect. It's not about never getting triggered. It's about catching it and not letting, not letting that egoic agenda take you on a wild goose chase way over here. You see, I see way too many people on these. I need to do this thing when what they really want is this. 
True. In order to be triggered, you must be loaded. Write this one down. Conflict is a tool for self-awareness. Conflict is a tool for self-awareness. That's a very good point. As long as you're observing what is going on, you are in your power. As long as you are observing what is going on, you're in your power. If you're just getting pulled to wherever your egoic agenda is taking you, you are not in your power. When you're rising above it and looking at your silly humanness, going, oh, look at my silly thing that I'm like, what's going on with that? You know, I'm believing that I can't recreate my body in a healthy way. What, what is this? This is crazy. Like when you look at it, conflict is a tool for self awareness. As long as you're observing what's going on, you're in power. Mm. And the biggest conflict that you'll get is, is this internal conflict between your heart and your head, between what you would love and, and what your egoic agenda believes is possible for you. Just put that in there for you. If you look in the chat box, conflict is a tool for self-awareness. As long as you're observing what's going on, you're in your power. Who's having a good session so far, hey? I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. So the key isn't about getting triggered. It isn't about worrying about not getting triggered or try to have some perfect mindset. The key is whenever you feel the pull here is that you stop it, you come back and you refocus on what it is you're creating. The key to super conscious mastery is not having no resistance. It's to mastering your focus because your consciousness creates. Your consciousness creates. Where you put your consciousness is where you've placed the power. Where you've placed the power is what's inevitably going to be created. If you are uh, putting the power in the fact that you must fix yourself, you will continue to be someone that needs to be fixed. If you put the power in money is going to save me or my spouse is going to save me or I can't, I can't change my emotions. If you put the power in emotions that are unchangeable, that you must, I've just got to remove this emotion. You'll just keep on getting it. I said a lot of people, Chris, I just need to learn how to get rid of stress. I just need to learn how to get rid of anxiety. No, stop trying to get rid of it. Your conscious will just create more of it. Instead, learn how to let go and put your focus on what you want to create. If you take one thing from today is to understand the, the whole point of our program isn't for you to use Recode as another problem solving tool. It's to really understand that your focus creates, you can rise up and out of any resistance and put your focus back on the end result. And that's all that matters. That's simply all that matters. Now, this is one of those things that is simple in its explanation, absolutely frustratingly difficult in its execution. <laughs> I 100% acknowledge that it is very easy to talk about this. <laughs> It's funny. <laughs> so I wanted to do this session today because I think it's very important that we realize the five steps have been designed in such a, a, a perfect way 
for you to be in the right structure and to create. So if you're not doing at least two choices every day, it is very unlikely that you are living a creative structure. So let's talk about this. Part of the magnetic mind method is that every day you pick two of your choices and use the five step creation process with those choices. It's very important. It's part of the introductory um, session. Okay, so every day, the first thing you must do is choose. Choose two of your choices minimum that you want to teach your consciousness how you want to think. Now, if you do two a day, that will be 14 a week. We don't even recommend that you have 14 choices. Don't know what's happened to my, uh, I'm a bit out of focus here. There we go. We, are, we don't recommend that you have 14. So I, I would say you're going to have around seven-ish things that you're creating. Okay. That means you're going to at least get around each choice twice a week. Does that make sense? So you choose. All you need to do to choose is you, is you get them out of your choices and you just, the only action you need to do there is you write down the end result. The second and third step, these can actually go in any order that you like. Okay. Now, by the way, if you want a, a detailed instruction, the, the, the best $9 that you ever spend is on this book. And uh, what I'm teaching you is chapter eight. If you have uh, anyone that you love in your life and they don't have this book, get them the book. Okay, so two and three can move. Step two is get into the emotion of the end result. And we do this with closed eyes. Okay, why do we get into the emotion of the end result? We get into the emotion to teach our unconscious automatic processing systems that this choice is going to be good. It's going to be safe and we experience it in advance. Step three is structural tension. Now, again, these two can move. Structural tension means you observe the now compared to that end result. Everything in this universe starts with two data points, masculine or feminine. There's always two data points to create anything. It's a, the, smallest, uh, the smallest unit that actually holds any volume, sorry, the, the, is a triangle. So you first must get two two aspects otherwise you won't create you must go that's where i'm going to be this is the beginning of the journey okay step four is you you want to remove any resistance and we will use the recode for that usually then step five is you take action Basically, you be it. You be it. You be it. So, if you really, really, really want to make sure you're in the creative structure, you will never miss a day. You will never miss a day. And every week, if you have seven choices, you will catch every choice at least twice and put it back into the right structure. 
You see that? You see what I was talking about before about getting caught off track? Well, if you just implement this one 15 minute a day little thing into your life, you'll, it, you, will, you will live the higher plane for sure. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.